When we first began our real estate investment journey, one of our biggest obstacles was understanding how to analyze potential investment opportunities quickly to come up with a competitive offer that would get accepted. In today's video, we're gonna be sharing with you guys three rules that you can use to value investment opportunities quicker. And if you stay till the end of this video, you will learn the drawback of each one of these rules. Let's get into it. Please note that these are not legal rules of any sort. They are merely just guidelines that a lot of real estate investors who analyze multiple deals use to quickly decide if an opportunity is worth their time before they take a deeper dive into the numbers. So the first rule we're talking about is the 70% rule. If you're looking to start out real estate investing for yourself by flipping houses, this one is for you. A lot of house flippers use this rule to quickly analyze their flips and rehab projects to determine how much money to pay for the property. According to this rule, the purchase price of a property you are flipping should be less than or equal to 70% of its after repair value minus the rehab costs that you expect to have on this property. Before we look at an example, I think it's important that you guys understand after repair value and what rehab costs means. After repair value, also known as the ARV, is simply the estimated market value of a property after the rehab or remodel is complete. Basically, it's an estimate of what a buyer is willing to pay for the property in the current market. Rehab costs are simply expenses that you expect to have after purchasing a property to improve it or perform repairs. Now the formula for this 70% rule is your ARV times 0.7 minus rehab costs. So as you can see, before using this formula, you obviously need to know what your ARV is as well as your rehab costs. Then once you come up with that, just plug and play. Easy as that. Now let's take a look at this example here. We have a property with an ARV of 100,000 and we're anticipating it's gonna take 25,000 to fix up this property. According to the 70% rule, our max offer to purchase this property is 45,000. 45,000, it's that simple. The second rule we're gonna talk about is the 1% rule. I remember before we took out a loan for our first rental property, it was so difficult figuring out what loan terms were good terms that would at least ensure we break even with the base rent we thought we could charge. That's where the 1% rule comes into play. The 1% rule states that the rental value of a rental property should be 1%, 1%. or higher. <laughs> this rule is used to determine if the monthly rent earned from an investment property will exceed the property's monthly mortgage. That seems like a good rule to know. I think it's pretty good as well. It certainly helped us when we needed to figure this out. So here is how the 1% rule works. Nicole, talk to these beautiful people. So you guys are gonna multiply the purchase price of the property plus any necessary repairs by 1%. The result is a base level of monthly rent. So for example, an investor seeking to buy a $200,000 house using the 1% rule, the investor would calculate a base rent of $2,000 monthly. In this case, the investor would seek a loan with terms that would result in a monthly payment of less than and absolutely no more than the $2,000. Simple, that's the simple rule. Now let's move on to the third rule, which is called the 50% rule. This 50% rule is a guideline that's used by so many real estate investors when analyzing potential profitability of rental properties. It can be used to analyze single family rentals as well as multi-family properties. And according to this rule, the operating expenses of a rental property should be less than or equal to 50% of the operating income. this rule because it's a quick way of analyzing several properties from a profitability standpoint, regardless of your financing type. 
So what does operating expenses and operating income mean? Operating expenses are all the expenses that you will incur while renting out a property, not including loan payments. This is a huge difference. Do not include loan payments when calculating operating expenses because some people buy their rentals in cash. Some examples of operating expenses are property taxes, insurance, property management fees, maintenance. Mm, good to know. So what is operating income? Operating income simply means the total income generated by a rental property minus vacancy expense. When using the 50% rule, Simply take the expected operating income and divide it by two. The result that you get is the estimated operating expense of the property. That makes perfect sense to me. Yes. You guys can use the information from this calculation to do a quick analysis of rental properties and filter out ones with excessively high expenses relative to their potential rents. An example of this is property A with a 10% vacancy rate is for sale and you find out that it brings in $1,350 gross rent with $700 a month in operating expenses. First, let's calculate our operating income. Monthly gross rent minus the vacancy rate equals 1350 minus 135 equals 1215. From our calculation, according to the 50% rule, to get our operating expense, we divide 1215 by two. And that gives us $607.50. Mm -hmm. Now, since the actual operating expense that we found out is greater than what the 50% rule allows, this property fails this test. Now remember that these are not concrete laws by any means. They do not need to be followed necessarily when investing in real estate. They are way more of just guidelines based on statistical data and experience of many different real estate investors. So just because a property doesn't exactly match these rules doesn't automatically mean that it's not a suitable investment opportunity. Yes, you may want to dive deeper into the numbers to figure out what's going on. Now, there are significant drawbacks to these rules that you must also be aware of. Kaji, go ahead and talk about those. Now, the drawback to the 70% rule is that you cannot apply this rule universally to all situations. You cannot apply it to all markets and also to all exit strategies. That makes sense. Yes, and when making offers on houses to flip, our advice is that you should outline your anticipated costs and examine them, also taking into consideration the ARV and your profit margin so that you can make a competitive offer. If you strictly apply the 70% rule when making offers, you will find it very difficult to get your offers accepted because the 70% rule is sometimes very extreme. I remember when we first got into investing, that was probably one of the first rules that we knew. Yeah. And it was so hard. I was like, there's no good deals on the market. How yeah. are we possibly going to get into investing? Yeah. But outlining what our actual expenses are and doing some more research and diving deeper into the numbers made us realize that we didn't have to strictly follow this 70% rule. And it gave us the opportunity to make better offers and more competitive offers to actually get houses under contract to flip. Amen. Amen. The 1% rule is only used for quick estimation because it doesn't take into account other costs associated with property upkeep, such as insurance and real estate taxes. The 50% rule, although commonly used, it produces extremely rough and potentially misleading cash flow estimates. Yes. The best way to truly find accurate estimations on operating expenses is to ask for or find the figures and itemize the expenses that you expect to have. Yes, definitely. Like ask, 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 because you want to see those with your own two eyeballs. It's, it's, it's what they say, trust, but verify. So 100%. Verify with your own eyes. Overall, we enjoy investing in real estate and the adventures of learning something new every single day. Yeah. We are happy to share this with you guys on our channel and we hope that this information helps you get started on your own journey to real estate investing. So help us by liking this to encourage us to share more 
and make sure to subscribe with your notifications on. Plus, make sure to check out this video on our best real estate advice on starting out. We will see, see you in the next, next one. one. Boom. Boom.